Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to talk about editing your photos on Lightroom on your phone. It is a little bit different from using the Lightroom app on your computer. So if you're interested in me making a video on that, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to do that. But today we're just focusing on the mobile version. I do have the paid version, but I will be covering free features and paid features. So I'll leave a list in the description box along with timestamps. So if you need to skip around, you can do that. But let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so I wanna start with some basics, like how to import a photo into Lightroom and things like that. So if you already know all this, you can skip ahead. But I wanted to show you, since I did struggle with it a little bit myself when I first started using this. So let's go into the Lightroom app. And here are all of my photos. So there's a couple things you can do. You can click right here in the bottom right corner, this little plus sign, and you can import from camera roll and some of these things will pop up. You can also take a photo directly in the Lightroom app by tapping the little camera icon at the bottom right as well. And here are a couple other nice features in the photo section before you even start editing. So there's this filter right up here that you can filter by type, by camera, by people, by location. So if you know that you're looking for a photo that you took while you were in New York, it gives you all of these options here, which can be really helpful if you're trying to find a specific photo. You can also sort by capture date or import date or modified date. I personally like doing import date. I just find it easier to find my photos that way. But those are just some options that you can change to make it easier to sort through your photos before you even start editing. So I'm gonna edit this photo right here of our Christmas tree this year. So I'm gonna start off with the free features and end with the paid features since most of the features I use are the free ones anyway. So the first thing I wanna talk about is crop. So it seems relatively straightforward, but there are a lot of options that you can use. So one of the biggest ones that I know a lot of people like is right here where it says three by four. If you click that, here are all of the different aspect ratio options. 4x5 is Instagram. So if you are gonna be posting this to Instagram, that's the aspect ratio that you're gonna be working with with a photo. So we'll use this. We'll just cut off the tree skirt a little bit. It's no big deal. You can also straighten it if it's not completely straight. So those are some things that you can do with the crop tool. The next section I wanna talk about is the light section. And this is where I think a majority of the major changes are gonna come from in a photo. So as you can see, there are a couple different very important options that you can choose from. So let's start with exposure. So exposure is gonna brighten up the entire image. And the way you can tell if it is overexposed or underexposed is when you're dragging this slider, if you tap and hold the image, you can see anything that's red or yellow means it's too hot, which means it's overexposed. But if you can't see any color, it usually means it's underexposed. So you wanna drag it to where you start to see some color, but it's not overwhelming. So like right about there would probably be good. And then if you tap and hold the image, it'll show you what it looked like before and what it looks like now so you can compare. Another really common thing that people change within Lightroom are highlights and shadows. So if you drag your highlight slider this way, it's gonna bump up the highlights and if you drag it down, it's gonna turn them down. And then, so I'm gonna turn mine up a little bit cause I want the lights on the tree to look a little twinklier. And then shadows, if you pull them down, they're gonna get darker and if you pull it up, it's gonna pull out shadows out of your image. I like having a little bit more shadow in my photos because I do think it gives it a little bit more contrast and a little bit more interest, but obviously all of this is just personal preference. And then you can mess with the whites and blacks as well. So if you pull the whites up, as you can see, the lights on the tree are getting a lot brighter and the blacks pulling it this way will make it less dark and then pulling it this way will make the blacks darker. So I am gonna keep my I'm gonna pull my blacks down a little bit, but then pull my whites up a little bit as well. And again, I'm gonna click and hold to see the before and the after. 
And that's just with making changes to the lights section. So the next section is color and another really important one for adjusting specific colors in your image, which is really important. So when you click color, here are the initial options. So the temperature is gonna make it warmer or cooler. If you slide it to the blue section, it's gonna make it cooler. And if you slide it over to yellow, it's gonna make it warmer. And again, it's just personal preference, whatever you prefer in terms of a warmer or cooler photo. It also depends on what you're taking a photo of. If you're taking a photo of the sky and you want it to be more blue, then you'll probably wanna make it cooler rather than warmer but this photo is full of warm tones, so I don't wanna mess with that. And I wanna talk about really quickly the difference between vibrance and saturation. So vibrance is what I actually use rather than saturation because I think that increasing the vibrance increases the color saturation, but in a more realistic way. So I'm gonna pull my vibrance up just a little bit and check the before and after. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is go to my color mix right here on the right hand side, this little color wheel. And here's where you can change specific colors in your image, which is my favorite section. So I think the yellows are just a little bit too vibrant in this photo. I wanna turn them down a little bit. So I'm gonna click on yellow and I'm gonna turn the saturation down for the yellows in this image. And I'm happy with that. And then now what I wanna do is make the green stand out a little bit more in the Christmas tree, of course. So I'm gonna change the hue to be a little bit of a brighter green. This is, you know, as you can see over here, this is really bright and this is really turned down. So I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit. Not so much where it looks fake, but I do want it to stand out a little bit. I'm gonna bump up the saturation just a tiny bit as well. And the luminance up a little bit as well. Again, here's the before and here is the after. So using the color mix is one of my favorite features on Lightroom. Again, this would be especially great if you were taking a photo of a sunset or something like that, where you wanted like the pink in the sky to pop a little bit more. Instead of just oversaturating the entire photo, you can choose specific colors to mess with to make your photo really personal to you and really special and really stand out. Another really common feature that I know some people like to add to their photo is graininess to make it look a little bit more vintage, a little bit more moody. So that is in the effects section. If you scroll down, as you can see, grain is one of the options. You can change the size of the graininess once you turn up grain, the roughness as well. So you can just play with that and work towards your personal preferences with graininess. I'm not the biggest fan of it, so I'm gonna leave it at just a tiny bit grainy. <laughs> okay, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is a paid feature, and that's this selective tool all the way on the left here. And the way you use this is by clicking the plus sign in the upper left-hand corner, and you can either do brush, radius, or a square. I do the brush tool, and then these are the options for changing the size. You just hold it down and drag up or down to change the size of your tool. This next one is feather, so you can put it up or down. Again, sliding. All the way down is no feather. As you can see, the circle is really like dense, but then if you drag it up, as you can see, it feathers out quite a bit. So I like feather down at like 10%, and then this is opacity. You can click and drag that up as well. So I'm gonna start coloring around my tree and you can see right here the red sections because I specifically want to change some more of the way the background looks but not mess with my lovely tree which is the star of the show. So I'm just gonna draw around here kind of roughly to start and then I can go in and erase any mess ups. So right here, I'm gonna click the eraser tool. I'm gonna make this smaller so I can get in. You can also zoom in. If you wanna move your photo around, you zoom in with two fingers and then just click and drag with two fingers and that's how you move your photo around and then one finger will actually implement what you're trying to do. So I'm just gonna erase anywhere where I accidentally got the tree. Now I can click light and color. So let's see with light, if I wanna brighten up the background, I can do that, which I am going to do. 
Also with color, I can change the temperature, but as you can see, if I change the temperature, nothing's happening to my tree. It's just messing with the parts that I specifically selected in red earlier. So that's what I really like about the selection tool if you do have that option. It's nice because you can just go to specific sections in your photo and make changes to them. So now if I'm happy with this photo, the next thing I can do is create a preset. And if you click presets here on the bottom and then click these three dots at the top, you can create a preset and I can name it warm filter. Click done and then that's gonna be a preset for future use. Another feature that I really like to use is versions. And so if I click on versions right here, I can create a version. So I'm gonna call this version one, create, and then apply. And then if I, let's say I wanted to make an adjustment where I make it a little bit more exposed for whatever reason, if I liked that, I could go over and click on versions and create version and call it version two create and now I can look through my different versions and see which one is my favorite which is super helpful if you can't decide between what kind of like vibe you want your photo to be this is a really good way to compare them all next to each other to see the difference now another thing you can do which is really cool is once your photo is edited in this upper right hand corner there's those three dots if you click on that and click copy settings it's gonna show you all of these settings right here. You can click the check mark and then they're copied. And then if I go back to another one of my photos and then click the three dots up here and click paste settings, it will paste those settings onto a new photo. So you don't have to try to remember all your settings or go through and try to match something. If you really like the way something was edited, you can either use a preset or just copy those edits onto another photo. Now, if you're happy with your photo and you wanna share it with the world, this little box up at the top with the arrow pointing up is how you export it. So you can export it to your camera roll. You can post it to the Instagram if that's what you are hoping to do. And another th cool thing you can do if you click on the three dots in the upper right hand corner again and click organize, you can add to specific albums within your Lightroom. So I'm gonna add this to edited images album that I have, click add. And then if you go back and click back again, here are all of my albums. And if I click on the plus sign, I can create a new album or a new folder. And that's how you can kind of keep everything separated within your Lightroom app and organized because it can get a little bit confusing remembering which photos you edited and which ones you didn't. So I highly recommend creating albums within your Lightroom app to keep everything organized. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support and I will see you in my next video. Bye.